through Alexandra came back from 2-0 down to beat Doncaster on penalties only last night live on TalkSport 2 can MK Dons produce another miracle here tonight we are off and underway the home side all in white attacking the goal away to our left Crawley Town are wearing all red shooting from left to right and straight away the combative Liam Kelly scorer of the opening goal finally worked opening goal on Tuesday gives away a free kick and there's a chance here for MK Dons to send the likes of O'Hora and Dan Harvey forward to try and attack the set piece yes really interesting to see how high the line is being held by Crawley Town look they're about 15 yards away from where the ball is being struck they are way way outside their own box here it's taken short over on the right hand side there are a cluster of four shirts in the centre and it's a deep cross towards the far post over the head of Jack Tucker who come forward but it was good play by Lofthouse the right wing back powerful burst over on that far touch line and not a terrible ball in no definitely not no he came on didn't he the other night and, uh, and elevated the team a little bit so not surprised to see him come in for, for Cameron Norman they, you know they've got two really good wing backs Joe Tomlinson on this left hand side has a terrific record this season seven goals six assists for him so I think they've got a big part to play they want to make the pitch as big as they possibly can MK Dons and that means I think the wing backs will see plenty of the ball a real carnival atmosphere being whipped up by those fans behind Philip Marshall's goal at the big talking point from Mike Williamson's team selection signed on loan from Aston Villa in January actually played one European game for Villa this season hasn't played for Milton Keynes since a mistake in a game against Notts County way back at the start of April but he gets the nod tonight ahead of Michael Kelly the regular number one big call from Mike Williamson in his grey hoodie just a few yards in front of us here at Stadium MK the ball is at the feet of Marshall all in yellow and he plays it out to the edge of the penalty area and O'Hora <laughs> three poorly <laughs> players immediately <laughs> pressing high yeah well they're going to aren't they I think they should um, just to, they know the MK Dons were very edgy one mistake playing out from the back like this oh and Tucker has passed it straight to Jay Williams Williams with a shot into the bottom corner and Crawley have the early goal that may just have sealed their first ever visit to Wembley. An absolute catastrophe from Milton Keynes as they were trying to play their way out for the back. And the standing goalkeeper is beaten inside three minutes. He'd only scored one goal all season before Tuesday night. Jay Williams, he's got two in two and Crawley Town can see the Wembley arch in their sights. MK Dons nil, Crawley won, 4 nil on aggregate. That is a disaster for MK Dons. Trying to play out from the back, overplaying. It's a silly ball, it's a, it's a square ball, it's a straight ball from the defender, I think, O'Hora into Alex Gilby who's come very deep it's intercepted and Williams just strokes it past the goalkeeper I think it's a feeble shot if, if I'm being honest it's a really weak effort and it dribbles into the bottom corner what an awful piece of football from MK but Crawley Town are in dreamland and it was excellent pressing you have to say it's a, it's a deliberate ploy from them to, to get in the face of MK and it's paid off well we fancied there might be an early goal tonight I'm not sure I'm not sure that too many of us expected it to come from the visitors and what a monumental challenge Mike Williamson and his team have on their hands now they have won a corner almost straight from the restart and they will be in a hurry to try and get themselves back on level terms on the evening 1-0 Crawley 4-0 to the Sussex side on aggregate the side who only snuck into the playoffs on the very last day of the season. Corner played short to the edge of the penalty area. And then the cross from Bate is charged down and it goes behind for another corner for Milton Keynes. Yeah, it's, a good yeah, it's a good response. You know, they're on the front foot. They, they've got to, they know they've got to score four. I mean, it's some task, but it isn't impossible. Bate to whip in the corner. Right-hand side as we look. It bobbles along the six-yard line. Look to the edge of the penalty area. And then played all the way back to Marshall in the MK goal. He gets plenty of purchase on the clearance upfield, but it's headed down by Conroy, the Crawley captain. 
And they're going to have to build again here down there. Left hand side with Jack Payne. MK Johns. And he plays a long ball up towards the front trio. Mm. But it's all the way through to Corey Adai, the Corley goalkeeper. 1 0 to the visitors 4-0 on aggregate yeah I can't believe what I just seen from Alex Gilby they pinned him in on the edge of the box the ball comes out to him he's 30 yards from goal and he turns and he plays the pass back to his goalkeeper incredible really you got to keep Crawley under pressure there surely it's been a very nervy start and, and Mike Williamson he's, he is calm down there but it, I don't know, he'll be fuming with the way they've started Also he's got away from Tucker down the Crawley right hand side Tucker slides in and Wins a goal kick, last touch was off Orsi, is just uh, exchanging some hand gestures with the MK Tons fans behind the goal. <laughs> he was quite quiet in the first leg actually, yeah. 21 goals this season, got the winner when they met in the league back in August, the former Grimsby man, Danilo Orsi. Yeah, he's had, had the best season of his career, he would be absolutely loving life right now. Here come MK at the other end, played into midfield and Max Dean, he feels like he was bundled over the referee says play on and Crawley have it now with their left wing, left wing back Joe Tomlinson we play seven minutes here on Talk Sport 2 it's MK Dons nil Crawley Town 1 MK are going to have to score four times just to take this to extra time now mm, big old task look Crawley can be a flaky side they've lost 18 games in the regular season it's only one less than Grimsby who just stayed up so you know, they can be beaten they're certainly playing with plenty of confidence tonight. Ball played into Orsi on the edge of the Milton Keynes area and chipped over the top of a static back line. Orsi purchase on it. I think he was expecting the offside flag. It never went up and can only scuff his effort wide. Well, that all came from a really powerful run from Joe Tomlinson. Yeah, it was good play. It was really good play um, from, from Corley yet again. It's a lovely little scoop pass. Wasn't Liam Kelly that just scooped it over the a square looking back three? And also he has more time than he realises and he, he sort of stretches for the effort and he, he, he bobbles it wide in the end off the volley. But yeah, that was, that was a real half, half chance. I thought it was offside though, but the, but the linesman didn't, put, didn't raise his flag. But I think he felt he might be as well, which is perhaps why he didn't meet the ball with any kind of conviction. Again, they're trying to force the error here. Three red shirts camped on the edge of the 18-yard box. And again, MK are playing their way out. Tucker out to his right-hand side. Now Hora is urged forward by the home supporters. Not the start that they came hoping for. It's been a really aggressive approach from Scott Lindsay. Very highly regarded Crawley manager. In fact, there's a goal of thought that they might have to win promotion just to keep hold of him, keep him out of the clutches of some of the bigger clubs in the EFL. Yeah. Well, he did pretty well. He was doing okay at Swindon, and then he sort of walked away from that gig, didn't he? To take this job, and you thought, well, he's, he's got to be crazy. No one really wanted the job at Crawley. It was crypto Crawley, you know, the laughing stock, the owners, but, you know, he's through very, very good coaching. He has transformed this team. They recruited a lot of non-league players, Cookie, and, and they've come good. And they've, you know, they're one of the best passing teams in League One. They play a lovely brand of football. And as we've seen tonight, they're pretty good at pressing as well. And it's been a fearless approach over the course of the two legs. I was at the Broadfield Stadium on Tuesday, and what impressed me was the fact they kept going for more goals because I was at Oxford for the first leg of their League One semi-final against Peterborough. And they seemed to declare at one. And in the end, it got them over the line with that draw at Peterborough but certainly Crawley I think was determined to come here with as big as lead, big a lead as possible knowing that MK Johns had an off night and they're having another one so far this evening nine minutes gone on Talk Sport 2 is Crawley who lead by Jay Williams third minute goal to nil a reminder earlier today Burnley relegated from the Premier League you heard that live on Talk Sport so they led at Tottenham before losing by two goals to one they'll be back in the EFL next season so too will Luton although not mathematically but because of their goal difference they are effectively down as well here come Crawley on the attack down their left hand side Kelly with a cross into the penalty area cleared as far as Campbell on the edge of the box and then MK Dons again struggle to clear their line it's Kelly with a little flick around the corner looking for all three goes all the way through to Marshall and some respite for the home hit team yeah the, the, the fans are sticking with the team though they're, they're getting behind them they're trying to raise them around roaring them on Jeremy Kelly started really well, hasn't he, over on that far side, the, the left wing back for Crawley. 
And I thought Liam Kelly was magnificent in that first match in midfield. He scored, didn't he? He was, he was involved in another of the goals as well. Terrific, industrious midfield performance from him. MK Dons nil, Crawley won. And we've played 11 minutes in this second leg semi-final. The sixth time that Milton Keynes have made it into an EFL playoff. They've never reached the final. And that hoodoo looks like it might continue. Still a long way to go though. If they could get a goal back, they will start to believe again the home fans. Corey Adol all in blue. The Crawley goalkeeper plays it high upfield. Looking for Orsi, headed down by Tucker, immediately collected by Lolos, and a bit of showboating for him as he flicked the ball up before bringing it neatly from the sky, but that move breaks down the edge of the area, and Lewis Bate quickly carries the ball over halfway for Milton Keynes. Here now is Dean, coming in from that left-hand side, slight tackle from the goal scorer Williams, and I think Max Dean just left a little bit on him then. Well, he was spoiling for a fight throughout the game on Tuesday and I don't think Max Dean needed to make contact there with Jay Williams and Adai, it towers above the MK number 18, has come across and just given him, him a big chest barge to it's make like that very me. point. Yeah, he came 30, 40 yards out of his goal to let Max Dean know that's not OK. We haven't seen a replay of it. I thought it was a great tackle from, from Jay Williams. It was a really, really well-timed. Um, challenge and, and and yeah Dean Dean then left some afters on him he's, he's all action isn't he Dean he doesn't stop he, he's happy to drop deep he wants to run with the ball I noticed he's he's averaging over four shots per game non-penalty shots per game which is third highest in the in league two so he's he, he really is an all action performer and, and if they are going to get back in this game you sense Max Dean's going to be at the heart of it he needs to Watch out though, he doesn't pick up a yellow or even a red here. Yeah, that was a nasty one. I think if uh, we did have VAR, then maybe they would have had a second glance. The referee has restarted play with a bounce ball in MK's favour. We have it on halfway now with Jack Tucker, number four on the back of his white jersey. He's played up to the edge of the 18 yard box well defended by Lawrence Maguire he can't keep the ball in play though and it's going to be a throw in for MK over on that far right hand side looking for an early equaliser here the home side after being stunned by that third minute Joe Williams goal having been caught trying to play the ball out from inside their own box as it crosses is in by Harvey and there's a clash of heads then on the edge of the Crawley penalty area and I think it's uh, Dion Comroe who's come off worse he's down and potentially in need of some treatment it remains 1-0 to Crawley yeah O'Hora it was he, they play ever so high the three centre backs for, for MK Dons in possession they're inside the opposition half and there's the ball just but flew up in the air the right side of the centre back O'Hora just comes steaming in and he, he mistimes it and, and, and clatters into the Crawley man and they just get the opportunity to get a breather in and to just slow down the game and he referee he's just having a word with the MK defender saying steady on but this has been a supremely confident start from Crawley Town they look very much in control of their emotions and they seem confident in the game plan that Scott Lindsay has sent them out with the late game in the Premier League by the way finished uh, in defeat for Nottingham Forest doesn't matter they are safe for another season in the Premier League it finished Forest 2 Chelsea 3 elsewhere today big win for Manchester City away from home at Fulham live on Talk Sport by four goals to nil all the pressure on Arsenal as they go to Old Trafford tomorrow the Sunday session will be live from that game uh, Brentford got a controversial 2-1 win at Bournemouth at Everton beat relegated Sheffield United 1-0 Sheffield United have now set a new record for the most goals conceded in a single Premier League season of 101. Newcastle won, Brighton won, it finishes St James's Park. Spurs beating Burnley 2-1, West Ham came from behind to defeat Luton 3-1 and relegate the Hatters 
effectively in David Moyes' last home game in charge and another good win for Crystal Palace. 3-1 at Wolves. Rangers beaten at Celtic in the old firm. Celtic a big step closer towards the championship and the FA Trophy final. More Wembley misery for Solihull Moors. They lost on penalties to Gateshead after a 2-2 draw. <laughs> We've got to feel sorry for Solihull Moors. I mean, twice in, in two weeks they lost a shoot out Wembley. They lost the playoff final as well to Grimsby a couple of years ago at the London Stadium. I was there. That was a heartbreaking one as well. Went to extra time. So what have you offered uh, MK Dons a penalty shootout? Now they take it. That looked a late challenge from Harvey on Lollis. Studs were showing. He feels Lollis made a bit of a meal of it to try and win the free kick. Referee plays the game on. And then the ball knocked up towards the edge of the Crawley penalty area. One back by Williams. There's just been a couple of rash moments, if you like, involving the home team. And they've got to keep their tempers under control. And right on cue, Harry Forster has been caught by a late challenge there from Joe Tomlinson on his left-hand side. Crawley free kick in the right-back position. They lead 1-0. Yeah, I, I, I spoke ahead of kick of about getting the balance right between sort of going for it and, and, and not leaving the back door open. But that also applies to your temperament. You've got to have fire in your bellies, but if you've got too much... It's going to backfire. You're going to give away free kicks and the game's going to, going to become stop-start. And that's not what they want. They want this game to be free-flowing, full of chances. And at the moment, Crawley have done a fantastic job of keeping them at arm's length. The yeah, opening 17 minutes have gone. Just as Scott Lindsay would have wanted. They were 22nd last season, Crawley. They only snuck into the playoffs in the final day of the regulation campaign with 70 points which is a, a joint low along with Blackpool as I already alluded to Adrian Clark alongside me they lost 18 games more than any team in the top half and they only beat one of the top eight and that was MK Dons yeah, yeah the record against the best teams in the division was atrocious you know but the, the, fortunately they won a lot of games against the, the teams in the bottom half and they're very good away from home Crawley Town you, you can see that here tonight 10 away victories the majority of them were yeah against teams in the bottom half but it gave them the I think the joint third best away record in the division so they come here tonight with that big advantage but also confident we know that we can go anywhere in the division and, and be competitive Hello with the ball swung out to the Crawley left hand side cushioned down by Jeremy Kelly and then played down the line to his namesake Liam one back by Lofthouse and you can hear the frustration amongst the home supporters at O'Hora the former Brighton man didn't get that ball upfield as quickly as they'd have liked in fact he's still on the halfway line and now O'Hora spots the run of Bates Bate can't bring it down on the edge of the box and it skids all the way through for Adai the goalkeeper 1-0 to Crawley 4-0 on aggregate they lead one of only two teams in the 92 never to have played at Wembley do you no, know the other? Okay. no Morecambe ok ok just yeah. stick that away in yeah, case you need it I like that I like that well I played against both teams uh, in non-league in the, in the National League when they were on their way up into the EFL um, small clubs both of them but you know, they're doing very well. I have to say, Crawley Town, you know, they don't get big crowds, but they've not been, not been anywhere near the bottom, really, this, this season. They've been excellent. Ball forward towards Forster, intercepted by Tomlinson for MK Dons, and here's Bates, the pint-sized central midfielder for the home side, runs into the centre circle, lays it off to his right-hand side and Wern. And Dean dropping deep tries to chip it over the top of the Crawley defence but couldn't pull it off. And that's a silly free kick to concede. By Lofthouse, the right wing back, and Crawley will have the dead ball now How just on the corner of their own box. How many have we seen? We're 19 minutes into the game and I, I think there have been so probably 5 to 10 needless fouls from MK Dons, just, just over egging it a little bit. They didn't have a great end, did they, to the, the regular season? They, they were so comfortable in terms they knew they were going to finish fourth a long way out. Maybe a bit of complacency yeah. set in. They the edge went, maybe. 5-3 five, winners over Harrogate, but I know Mike Williamson wasn't happy with their defending that day. 4-4 four, four at home to Sutton in a bonkers game on the final day of the season. Of course, that 3-0 defeat at Crawley, they've conceded 10 in their last three matches. 
and they've conceded another early on here tonight they trail 1-0 they need four just to force extra time all out to the MK left hand side chance for Tomlinson to run into the penalty area drills it right footed blocked by that sea of red jerseys picked up again by Harvey well forward from the back just outside the area but again Crawley defend it well and Harvey will have to build again here midway inside the Crawley half he comes infield and rolls it into the feet of the yellow booted bait yeah, leaving themselves 1v1 at the back committing a lot of bodies forward I guess it's risk and reward now isn't it for MK uh, if they do lose it they're very very susceptible to the counter here first quarter of the game has gone according to plan as far as Crawley are concerned they got the goal early and they're defending very well here had I yet to be seriously tested that could change with Tomlinson again the dancing feet from the left hand side cross blocked by Harry Forster I thought it was excellent in the first game <coughs> on Tuesday roaming down that right hand side but doing his defensive duties as well MK have a throw level with a penalty area on this left hand side and Dan Harvey is going to take it so it will be hoisted into the penalty box away to our left in front of the travelling Crawley fans flicked on at the near post and Dean trying to keep it alive but again well defended and it's scooped clear towards the centre circle where Tomlinson will pick it up cushions his pass in towards Bates who made a mess of it it's collected by Jack Tucker in the right back position he is immediately pressurised by the hard working all seat and it's out of play for a Crawley throw 1-0 they lead well I think that's the difference between the two teams obviously it's the difference tonight because Crawley have got their goal very early on in that third minute from pressing the back three of Milton Keynes but in the first leg I only thought MK might be more proactive you know scored a lot of goals from high turnovers this season MK Dons the, the joint most in the division yeah, they sat off had a deep lying block and allowed Crawley the initiative well Crawley are doing the exact opposite to them aren't they you, you could have been forgiven for thinking well Crawley are just going to take it easy put men behind the ball but that's not really how they're going about their work very very assertive defending from the front and here they come again looking for another goal Campbell out to the right and Forster blocked by Harvey and they might have a chance here at MK to spring the counter attack again the home fans are unhappy because they haven't done that they played it back to their own penalty area they do look a little bit lacking in confidence MK don't they do yeah for a team that has scored a lot of goals lately I know they've conceded plenty but they're not they're not playing like a team that finished fourth in the division they not famous. playing like a team who believe they can go through to no them. they're not it's um it's edgy and I think the, the supporters are are absolutely sensing that as well through lying weight the final next Sunday live on TalkSport 2 from Wembley League 1 playoff final 24 hours earlier we know that will be Bolton against Oxford and the championship semi-finals get underway tomorrow live on TalkSport back-to-back -back commentaries we start at Carrow Road Norwich against Leeds then we're hot footing it to the Hawthorns as West Bromwich Albion host Southampton don't you just love this time of year I oh, love it I, I really do the playoffs always deliver don't they great great drama and I think the championship playoffs are particularly interesting because you've got the juggernauts of Leeds and Southampton in there who are licking their wounds how will they recover from what must be a massive disappointment of, of failing to make top two yeah, so Lambson have had a few more weeks, I think, to yeah. come to terms with that. Leeds missing out late in the day to Ipswich. It's probably have possession on the edge of their own 18-yard box. Conroy, a losing semi-finalist with Swindon two years ago. Now the Crawley skipper is in no real hurry to get the ball played forward. Instead, they go back to Adai, who's very comfortable, as we know from the first game, carrying the ball out from the back, and again, he drops into that right-back position. And then finds Williams with his back to goal and it's played out to the left hand side now yeah. where Lawrence Maguire who looks like Harry runs like Harry plays like Harry <laughs> brings it forward yeah a great stat on on Corey Adai not just oh he's Ooh, giving it away though but he's passed it into trouble and then it was a tame effort he'll be maybe with more time than he used there after Adai passed it straight to the MK Dons captain around about 30 yards out 
and he scuffed it right footed straight back into the keeper's gloves. Yeah, that was sloppy. That was from, from Ado. He was super confident, isn't he, with the ball at his feet. But he's a very good goalie as well. Opsa with their goals prevented stats so that he's prevented, wait for it, 17.9 extra goals this season. The next closest goalkeeper is Wrexham's that saved an extra 7.6. I mean, that's, that's impressive. Those are mind-boggling numbers for the former Coventry youngster. Also had a spell in Denmark early in his career. Might have some more stopping to do here because MK have got plenty of men forward. Bait out to the right-hand side. Deep cross from O'Hora towards Dean. Clear to the edge of the penalty area. Oh. Tom to the shoot. And that's a magnificent save. Right on cue from Adai. It was a power pack left foot shot that was heading for the bottom corner. And he flings himself a big goalkeeper down to his left and claws it behind for a corner kick. Wow, that is a scorching strike from Tomlinson. But what about the save? The shot goes through bodies and he reacts so quickly. He, he springs left and he palms it behind the goal. That is pretty special from Corey Adai. MK with their third corner of the evening. Played short to the edge of the penalty area before being curled into the box. But the offside flag was up. Free kick for Crawley. I can see Ellis Harrison stood up in the back row of the MK dugout. I wonder, even at this early stage, Adrian Clark, if Mike Williamson might be contemplating changes. They're 1-0 well, down, 4 down on aggregate. He's going to have to go for broke. Yeah, I, d I don't expect him to, <laughs> to sit on things for too long. If he doesn't like what he's seeing, he will make the change. We've seen a bold move with the go goalkeeper coming in from for the starting 11 yeah I can, I can see him making changes probably not before half time but don't ride it off had a good distance on the free kick but it's collected by the Alice Band wearing Bates deep inside MK territory and he plays it back to Harvey his centre back and now the goalkeeper Marshall who's a little uncomfortable plays the ball to the halfway line it was won by Lolos but back of the feet of the MK goalkeeper once more. And I didn't particularly think that Michael Kelly did a lot wrong in that first game in terms of the goals he conceded. And I just wonder when you make such a big call at this stage of the season, how much extra pressure does that heap on the man coming in? But, yeah, a lot. Of course it doesn't. And what also happens is that the guy that's been dropped is, is devastated. And he's got lots of mates in the team. Some of them might be in the back three. And all they're talking about here, the kickoff, is can't believe what's happened to Sir, you know, happened to the goalie. You know, so it can be a distraction, can't it? Um, especially as the goalkeeper is on loan from Aston Villa as well. He's not a player that actually belongs to, to, to MK Don. So, yeah, it's a it's a gamble that hasn't paid off so far. We haven't got a monitor here, but the finish from 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 Williams was a gentle one, wasn't it? I felt the goalkeeper was a little bit slow getting down to it. It's the worst possible start, isn't it, for him? Three minutes into the game, already having to pick the ball out from the back of his net. Hadn't really had time to acclimatise. Strong but fair challenge from Harry Forster on Gilby. MK Don's fans not happy with it, but referee who's let the game flow well says play on. And it's bowled out by. Marshall on the edge of that MK Don's penalty area out to his right hand side and O'Hora MK Neil Crawley won 29 minutes played 4-0 the deficit now over the two games they have scored three or more goals on eight occasions this season but only won by three goals here at home on three occasions I'm going to have to do that again. Ball into the penalty area. They have to win four, uh, five one. So they have to win five one. I need to take this to to extra time. Yeah. Four one. Four one. Um, <laughs> can't be losing count here. Need Carol Waterman. We're we losing count here. Yeah, so they're, they're four nil down. They're four nil down. They need to score four. Yeah, yeah. Four one. Yeah. I was just testing you. Make sure you had your wits about you. <laughs> you did confuse me. You, you got me <laughs> doubting myself there, Cricky. Um, yeah, four will take it to extra time. But, um, I mean, the way that this game has started, you know, I don't want to write this game off. They don't want to lose listeners, but they're not performing in a way at the moment that suggests they can 
turn this around but you never know football is a crazy game you know get them in at half time score two early goals second half things might start to look a bit wobbly for Corley so it's not done yet it's looking wobbly here because Orsi has stolen the ball away from Harvey and he's shooting towards the bottom corner and Crawley Town have their second they need five now MK Dons it's another defensive disaster class from Milton Keynes Dons and Daniela Orsi Cooley from the edge of the penalty area slots in his 22nd of the season they lead 5-0 on aggregate Crawley Town get those book uh, trip booked to Wembley you're heading to the arch next weekend it's another disastrous moment for MK Dons it's Tucker this time he lets the ball bounce he's facing his own goal and Orsi just muscles him off the ball and again I have to say that the strike even though it is in the corner not the most it, powerful it's not a powerful strike it's past past Marshall into the far corner this is turning into a horror show for MK Dons. And, and there are home supporters who are already leaving the stadium. Yeah. Well, either leaving or going to get a cup of tea or a beer or something like that. But, yeah, they, they, you can suddenly see a lot of empty seats. Uh, I, I feel for them after the season they've had to put in a, a shocking performance at Crawley and then to follow it up with this, uh, you know, a horrible half an hour here at their own ground it's um, all of that work this season all of that hard work all of the excellent performances undone by 120 minutes of really really poor football from them you're listening to MK Dons against Crawley Town in the EFL League 2 on Talk Sport 2 with McDonald's order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points 18 plus terms and conditions apply have they scored with their only two shots on target? I believe so yeah, the goalie didn't look like saving either of them. It, it, they've scored from winning the ball high up again. It's it's a very clear tactic, and it's a tactic that has, has reaped massive rewards for Crawley Town. Those fans, they might be separated in, the, in that upper tier, away to our left, but they're united in absolute joy right now. They're, they're thinking of Wembley. Stunning performance over the two legs. Okay, sarah, sarah. Signos Crawley fans high up in the gods in the second tier here at Stadium MK well he told me after the first game Scott Lindsay they wouldn't come here and just try and keep a clean sheet they wanted to get themselves on the scoreboard they've done it twice in the opening 31 minutes Jay Williams after three minutes yeah. after the ball was passed straight to him and Danilo Orsi taking advantage of more sloppy defending for his 22nd of the season yeah we should have known this they, they scored in their last seven they scored in 12 of their last 13 they scored in 15 of their last 17 Crawley Town scored goals whether it's at home or away so it's probably always likely that MK would need four but conceding two that surely ends it yeah, five from here just doesn't feel realistic All right Williamson just for a few moments sat in his seat in the dugout even he looks a little bit resigned and certainly my home fans sit in stunned silence here on TalkSport 2 MK Neil Crawley Town 2 as Max Dean gives away a foul in the Crawley right wing position he was shouting in the face of Forster there as he went to ground Some frustration on show now in the home ranks on and off the pitch remember MK Dons haven't lost back-to-back -back games since Mike Williamson took charge back in mid-October that record is under serious threat they haven't looked like scoring either MK another subdued performance from the home team Bate almost stealing the ball deep inside Crawley territory Lolos has been dispossessed by Gilby he's gone down holding his shoulder referee 
again is an interesting giving the free kick Gilby on the edge of the area slides it forward looking for the run of Dean well, well defended and Lolos looks in a little bit of discomfort here oh, yeah. that's not what you want when you know that your team is playing at Wembley in what is it eight days time you do not want to hurt your shoulder and, and he's really holding it he's writhing around in agony hopefully it's not collarbone I did, I did a collarbone once goodness me that was painful and you know you're talking a couple of months out let's hope he's all right well, he's back on his feet now pretty rapidly Lars. He's a good player very exciting player actually you know he's had a terrific season we didn't know a lot about him did we ahead of this campaign but 13 goals five assists fabulous effort from him he's also scored in five of his last seven he is just uh, making his way off the pitch with the Crawley physio but I think uh, that is a precautionary act we've got nine minutes plus stoppage time to play in the first half you listen to talk sport 2 live from Stadium MK the last of the League 2 playoff semi-finals before the championship takes centre stage tomorrow both those games live on talk sport Norwich against Leeds West Brom against Southampton as part of the Sunday session that comes live from Old Trafford Arsenal I'm going to play catch up against uh, Manchester City City 4-0 winners on talk sport against Fulham this morning here comes Tomlinson right for the chop from the edge of the penalty the goalkeeper's only managed to palm it away but really yeah. good choice well defended again yeah. by Crawley had just had a strength of numbers back there to clear up field and now Orsi accelerates down the right and it's found play. Kelly Kelly couldn't quite bring it under control midway inside the MK half and the home team with the opportunity to build again they need a goal before half time they need two ideally yep they really do and look the, the attitude's good the, the, you know they're doing their best it's just the execution of their play has, has been disappointing <sighs> yeah, you look they've forced a couple of good saves out of Corey Adai we're giving their due both long shots though they haven't carved them open have they haven't really got in behind them enough they haven't been flashing balls across that six yard box for, uh, that six yard box for fun like they can do because they've got two good wing backs it's been comfortable I'd say for the men in red more comfortable when they dared envisage I would imagine long throw from Crawley Town up towards Orsi sliding into clear was Tucker Bake picks it up on halfway and taps it back into the centre circle of horror. And then strong play from Maguire. Charging Dean off the ball. Rushed him over, didn't he? As if he wasn't there. It does look like the, just the, the, the gate, the way he stands, it does look like Harry Maguire. Well, could be uh, a Maguire family double at Wembley, Manchester United in the FA Cup come final. On. Come on, Cricky. Crawley. It's unlikely, right? Looking to book their place <laughs> it just meant they might both play there ok ok well Harry's injured isn't he at the moment I don't know if he's yeah, going to be fit for the I cup I think Manchester United he will be fit for that game somebody's got to be fit for that game <laughs> <laughs> yeah it feels like an option I think Corley might have a better chance of, of winning at Wembley I'd make them favourites I have to say over crew especially the way they've played in this two legged semi absolutely almost flawless I'd say from Corley they anyway, certainly look like they've saved their best for the playoffs heavy underdogs going into that first game on Tuesday made light work of the home leg and they're doing the same here 2-0 up with 6 minutes the first half to play and they've had some big days out in recent memory but none will be bigger than this final that's a lovely ball from Lolos into Campbell who's just offside on the edge of the area and it's a free kick for MK Dons yeah he was off yeah, it was a nice ball for Lolos, who seems to have recovered. The physio was sort of, almost looked as if he was trying to pop the shoulder back in. Surely, surely it wasn't dislocated. I, I think he was just checking to see whether it was. But, yeah, he, he'll be a, he'll love Wembley, I think, Lolos. You know, big open space, bit of a flair player. Um, they've got Orsi as well. Like you can see him running the channels for fun on that big pitch at Wembley. It's, um, yeah, look they've got the job to do here and this isn't done yet but it almost is nine matches in a row now Crawley have found the back of the net Bate wins a free kick for a over the top challenge from Lolos and the referee is going to show the first yellow card of the evening for the Crawley number eight yeah that was silly you know you're 
you're five nil up on aggregate don't get yourself a yellow and then you put yourself on you know on the line for a possible suspension for next week if you pick up another so yeah a lot of us um, a little bit over excited there scott lindsay deep in conversation the crawley manager with a fourth official away to our left the press box here at stadium mk level with the penalty area that mk dons are defending they use that term the loosest possible sense of the words because they're defending on both goals was negligent and so far that change of keeper that mike williamson made that bold call before kickoff hasn't paid up paid off i think adrian clark alongside me feels that philip marshall could have done better with both crawley goals yeah for the first for sure he, he went down in stages the second one was right in the corner but for me it was still a, a fairly weak shot that I, I might have expected him to save so yeah it's backfired for Mike Williamson you can't blame him I guess for, for trying something different but yeah it's um, yeah it's been a horrible horrible first half for him and for his team MK Dons beat all three of their playoff rivals here at Stadium MK in the regular season lost two or three away from home unless they can win by three clear goals tonight it will be Crawley off to Wembley they have got an injury issue here Harry Forster is down just inside the MK Don's half he was holding his hamstring I'm afraid and they've stripped the substitute already oh well that is a, a major blow with that playoff final just eight days away Adi, Adi Amo, one potential option to come on, but it's going to be Keller Gordon. Keller, Keller Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. What a blow for Forster. He, he started this game great. Yeah, been brilliant over the two legs, and he is walking off very gingerly. He fits the hammy. He won't play next next weekend, I'm afraid. Well, that's like it's just a, a minor niggle rather than a, a, a tear. Yeah. They're, they're at the stage of the game where they can afford to, yeah. to take him off but he is heading straight to the tunnel he is shaking his head Harry forced to disappointment for him Kellen Gordon who played under Scott Lindsay at Swindon is on in his place came on in the second half on Tuesday as well so a light for light change Crawley leading here on the night by two goals to nil five nil on aggregate Obviously Sheffield Wednesday came back from 4-0 down to beat Peter in the League One semis last season. Apologies to Adrian Durham, he's listening on his way back from uh, the London Stadium. Yeah, I've already been accused of, of trolling him earlier on tonight by bringing that up online. Has anyone come back from five down? No. With one half to no. play? <laughs> Just uh, no, absolutely not. And uh, as much as I'd kind of like it to happen, because that would be incredible drama, I do think that was a little bit of a pipe dream. Here's Tomlinson down by the left corner flag for MK Dante. Need at least a goal before half time, you feel, to even make a fist of it in the second half. Bait forward to Dean. Dean spots the runner Gilby inside the area. He's got right underneath the cross. That is appalling. I have to say, what, I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. It's over the head of everybody in white and out for a throw in on the opposite side Which of the ground. He's not doing themselves justice. Because Alex Gilby is a really good player at this level. Probably shouldn't be in League 2 I'd say he's a League 1 level player he scored 13 goals made 10 assists he's the player of the year players player of the year and what is a very simple cross he just ballooned it I mean it's it's, it's, it's awful so yeah but the, but it sums up doesn't it, it sums they're up they're feeling frazzled out there can't quite believe what's happened to them over the course of I a game and a half I think they're now disillusioned they're, they're feeling like they just want it to end uh, it's a crushing disappointment and I think they're embarrassed and I also feel that they've, they've lost confidence they know the crowd have almost given up on them as well and I think it's a, yeah it's a case of them almost wanting the final whistle now they, they, they've got to be professional but I don't think they, they're playing with belief here Jack Tucker carrying the ball into the Crawley half we've got just a few seconds of normal time to play there will be a couple of added minutes I think here's Tomlinson level with the penalty area down the left hand side of Milton Keynes taking on the sub Gordon drilling the cross low but stamped away at the near post by Will Wright and out for a throw 
what, what a clearance that was in that first leg, by the way, when Max Dean went through. That was almost a turning point, wasn't I it? I think that's the big moment in the tie. Yeah, you know, they, they take the lead there. And it's a very, very different game, isn't it? It was, a ma it was a magnificent, almost out of this world piece of defending. We've got a free kick here, Milton Keynes. A few yards shy of the right corner of the 18-yard box. Five added minutes at the end of the first half. I was being conservative when I said there'd be a couple added on. That might just give the home supporters a bit more belief. Especially if they can make something from this set piece. It's going to be Jack Payne, I think, to whip it in. Left footed from the right-hand side. Jack Tucker is still a few yards to his left. Or Tomlinson, rather, I think it is. It's towards the far post. It's a good delivery. And it's been turned in by Max Dean. And maybe there is still life in Milton Keynes' dance. Max Dean who missed that glaring chance on Tuesday, has just made a partial man. It was a really good delivery. Jack Payne to the far post, headed down inside the six-yard box, and Dean, from four yards out, makes it MK Dons 1, Crawley 2. Oh, boy, did Milton Keynes need that. It's a brilliant free kick from Jack Payne. I've seen this boy ever since he came through the ranks at South End. You know, really exciting attacking midfield player. He's got a lovely left foot and he's whipped it to the fast stick. Jack Tucker, who was to blame for that second goal, he gets on the end of it. And it's a brilliant set, isn't it? Across the face of goal. And there he is, Max Dean. 15 goals in the regular season in the league. Really, really sharp finish. Ah, look, that, that gives them a little bit of hope. 16 goals and five assists now for Dean over the course of the campaign 2-1 on the night Crawley leading 5-1 on aggregate the first step <laughs> yeah. up what is uh, yeah, pretty a pretty sizable ladder it's a baby step isn't it and, and look a couple more of those and suddenly it might be a different game but I imagine Corley will regroup here uh, but yeah look, that's it that's just a little warning for Corley that, that the job isn't quite done yet yeah I'm sure that'll be the message from Scott Lindsay when he gets the players back into the dressing room the ball scooped forward though by Lollis and he's onside here and an opportunity to finish the tie again and my word, Jeremy Kelly probably should have taken it. Brilliant ball over the top. I thought he was offside. So did the MK Dons defenders. Bellowing at the assistant. The flag stayed down. Out, out came Marshall. And he just didn't get enough contact on the ball to lift it over the goalkeeper and over the line as well. Yeah, it's a shocking lob from Kelly. The pass is sensational. Really sublime. Just dinks it over a really square looking rear guard. My instinct was that it was offside, but he did make a run from deep. Maybe the timing was spot on. But once he gets in, there's not a lot of belief there from Jeremy Kelly. He lobs it straight in the air. It almost goes up vertically and it barely reaches the goal. And MK are able to, to clear their lines. It doesn't even reach the goal line. So, look, that's a let off, isn't it, for, for MK? I don't know if Lolos was caught off the ball, but it's not Lolos who's down. It's uh, Will Wright who looks very groggy and is being helped back to his feet by Gordon. Max Dean clearly felt like he was wasting time, the Crawley defender. So we're going to get added time to added on time here. And Crawley Town fans thought it was in. They're obviously at the far end of the stadium. The roar went up, but it, it, it barely reached the goal. It was a re really disappointing execution from, from the player. Probably just put his foot through it, couldn't he? Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't think the lob was a bad choice. It was just a really bad lob. Oh, Hora forward for MK Dons, looking for Dean. McGuire's been penalised for a foul off the ball, so it's going to be another free kick right at the end of five added minutes here and another chance to load up the penalty area away to the left. If they could get back on level terms, it would change the complexion of Mike Williamson's half-time team tour, that's for sure. And we've seen already with the goal they have scored, MK's prowess from set pieces. Yeah, 
high line again, isn't it? They're going to have to time their run here. It's risky from Corley. But it makes it very awkward for the taker. And Dean is still in an offside position at the moment. He'll come back on side when the ball is played. So towards the edge of the penalty area. Decent distance on the clearance away. It's collected by Harvey who comes forward down the left-hand side for MK Dons. The Corley fans want the half-time whistle. We've gone beyond the five added minutes, but there was that injury for right during that time it's scooped forward by Tucker but over the head of all of his teammates and out for a goal kick and that probably Adrian Clark will be the last meaningful act of the half I think so um, and 2-1 and is, is a fair reflection uh, of what we've seen here Crawley have, have been the better side they haven't peppered the goal but whenever they've got in and around the final third they, they've carried a threat I think they've been confident they've defended from the front superbly and, and they've gone about their work in a very professional manner. Um, MK have, have been pretty poor. I think the quality has been low from them and, and that they'd be grateful, I think, to, to have got that one goal. But it does give them a little bit of hope. Dean out to the right-hand side. Still, we play on at the end of the first half. MK Johns 2-1 down the night. 5-1 on aggregate. Oh, this is a, a breathtaking run by the wing-back. Lofthouse stopped at his tracks on the edge of the penalty area, but he carried the ball an awful long way. Well defended by Crawley. For a moment, it looked like he was going to bulldoze his way through. Uh, oh, it was, it was slaloming in between defenders, wasn't it? It was a brilliant buccaneering run. Just couldn't get a shot away. Here's Tomlinson. Crosses from the left-hand side. Adai couldn't come for it. He's out of play. Four a throw. We've played six and a half at it on minutes now. Still... The referee is happy to let proceedings continue. <laughs> yeah, I think he stopped. his watch might have stopped here. Yeah. But look, it's good for MK Dons. You know, it's given them an extra extra chance to, to pull it back level, but I don't think it's going to happen. Well, they're going to be attacking the goal behind which the more vocal supporters are gathered. That might just give them an extra lift in the second half because there goes the half-time whistle. Well, here we go for the second half. MK Dons have 45 minutes to score four goals and save their promotion dream oh, what a half it would be if they were to manage it and look you can see there's it intent they're already playing at a faster tempo well, they're basically playing with four forwards on the pitch as well and here down the right hand side comes Lofthouse looking for Harrison in the centre I guess the danger when you flood too many men forward is that you can be hit on the counter Jeremy Kelly Linking up with his namesake Liam on this left-hand side for Crawley. As Adrian Clark has already alluded to a determination in the eyes of the MK Dons players for this second half. They now have Marshall in goal. The back three of Tucker, O'Hora and Harvey. Lofthouse and Tomlinson, the wing-backs. I wonder if Gilby is going to drop in alongside Payne in midfield and then Harrison, Wern and Dean. Yeah the front three yeah I think so yeah look, it's going to be Payne really sitting with Wern and, uh, and Gilby in front and then the front two um, yeah, look, why not I guess they've got to get the, full, the ball forward a little bit earlier they've got to put put the t uh, put Crawley under pressure and look Crawley look at the way they're set up here they have left themselves 2v2 at the back and you know that's the confidence they have the Crawley team for the second half Adai in goal uh, McKenna, Conroy and Maguire the back three Gordon and Jeremy Kelly the wing backs Williams and Liam Kelly in midfield Campbell, Orsi and Lolos in attack one more goal but Crawley would absolutely end the tie end the conversation yeah. you, you were at uh, Peterborough last season or at Hillsborough, Hillsborough I should say when they came back from 4-0 down yeah. and won 5-1 in the second best, league so it can happen I've, yeah best game I've ever been to it, it just wild and it, it, it can happen. You can have these crazy matches, these crazy halves. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't be the first time a team scored four in a half if they were to manage this. You just think in the context of what we've seen so far, it feels so unlikely, but it, it is something that's happened before and maybe just not in a playoff semi-final. If they get one, you wonder how that might try and change the main mindset of the Crawley players. Have to say at the moment they've looked cool, calm and collective. I've, I've loved their mindset here tonight. They've been proactive. They've gone, they've, they've gone to press. There's been nothing passive about Crawley Town. Here they are again. Williams steps in. Kelly, defensive midfielder, but he's, there he is, ferreting inside Lola's the final the third. edge of the area. Opportunity maybe. Slides it forward for Liam Kelly. Oh, what a wonderful move! And Danilo Orsi taps in his second 
and Crawley's third. And if there was any doubt, there isn't any more. For the first time in their history, Crawley Town are heading to Wembley. Call it off. Crawley are in the final. That is magnificent football. It's lovely. Williams steps out from a defensive midfield position to win the ball. He tees it up to Kelly and Kelly goes on a little run. It's a give and go. And then Orsi does what he's done all season, converts from close range. That is teamwork. That is precision. Passing football from Scott Lindsay's Crawley Town. And they deserve to go through. And the way that Liam Kelly celebrated the assist was like he'd scored the goal himself, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he, he's proud of himself, and I think he should be proud of his performances across these two legs. You know, he's an experienced player, but you can see he's reveling in this. That was lovely football. Absolutely wonderful move from Crawley Town. They've scored some fantastic goals over the two games, and, well... Just as MK Dons gave themselves a glimmer of hope right at the end of the first half with that Dean goal. It's been extinguished very early in the second. And again, that's testament to Crawley's character, mental fortitude and their footballing ability. You won't see many better goals than that. They want a penalty though. And the referee points for a goal kick. It was a coming together inside the Crawley area no surprise Dean right at the forefront of it he went down under the challenge from Gordon referee says get back to your feet it's a goal kick well he's not giving up is he Max Dean I mean he is everywhere he, uh, someone, someone better tell him the score because he's charging around like it you know it's going to happen but um, a full credit to him for that so but better tell me the score it's 6-1 <laughs> on aggregate now correct it is 6-1 on aggregate they need to win 6-3 now MK Dons to take this to extra time five goals required wow it's been a it's been a comprehensive pasting from Crawley hasn't it over the two games and they will go to Wembley in absolutely buoyant mood to play crew after their comeback victory live on Talk Sport 2 last night from 2-0 down the first leg they won 2-0 away from home and went through on penalties and we're going to see another couple of changes here and I wonder if uh, well, if he's resting players, Scott Lindsay, for the final. Well, you can now. You can. It's, it's safe. They're not losing it from here. And I, I do think it's about saving players' legs. And, and obviously giving others that have been on the fringe a little bit of game time, you know, ahead of Wembley, because they might need them. Jack Rolls, <laughs> the Cypriot, former Tottenham youngster, is one of those coming on. He's done really well, off at the other end to keep the ball from going out for a goal kick, but in doing so, only hooked it back into Crawley possession. Jeremy Kelly forward to Lolos in the centre circle. Kelly has made a run ahead of him. And Lolos back to Maguire inside his own half of the field. Neat football again here from Crawley, but it's swam back by Harrison. And MK Dons will try and build an attack of their own. Down this near side with Lofthouse, he's there ahead of Kelly momentarily, but he stuck to the task, Kelly, and it's cleared upfield by Maguire. Ronan Darcy, who got the third goal off the bench in the first game, also coming on. Yeah. But they're not resting on this, Corley. I think they can for more goals here. But the, uh, oh, no I've stage. got to say, that's ridiculous from Lofthouse. He just wrestled Lolos to the floor. That has to be a yellow card. Yeah. Poor, isn't it? It's, it's Harvey, Harvey, actually. Yeah, it's Harvey. Harvey, it was. And it's Lollis, of course, who, who picked up that shoulder injury in the first half. Is he holding it again? He might be. But at no stage are Crawley saying, we're going to just sit here and we're going to just knock it around and we're going to be defensive. They, they're playing like it's nil-nil. And, and I admire them for that. Well, Lollis is going off now, presumably, I think, to protect that injury. Yeah, Harvey got a yellow card. Well, he had to for that. I mean, it was wasn't football, was it? <laughs> it's got to be said. Just trying to see who the second Crawley change will be. We have a little bit of uh, breaking news to bring you here on Talk Sport Two. Crystal Palace manager Oliver Glasner committing his future to the club following interest from Bayern Munich. Tell you what, they're working their way down the list, Bayern. Maybe they'll be knocking on your door, Adrian Clark, very shortly. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's 
I didn't even know that he was being linked. I mean, he's a very good manager, clearly. Um, I'm not going to buy Munich either, by the way, before no. I get worried back <laughs> But look, it is astonishing that Bayern Munich uh, are looking at Crystal Palace and thinking we'll, we'll take their manager. It's, you know, even link, being linked with Ten Hag after the season he's having. It's just crazy. Uh, Jack Rolls is on for Adam Campbell, so double change out wide for Crawley. Darcy replacing Lolos, who certainly leaves the pitch battered and bruised. I can see that MK Dons are about to bring on MJ Williams as well, the former Liverpool man. Yeah. yeah, he's a good player, Jim Williams. I think he's at Bolton as well. Um, it's a, they've got some good players at the club, you know. MK. A lot of play, a lot of key players are, are injured. That must be said. But um, yeah, they've got, they've got a good squad. It's been a difficult playoff semi-final for the home side. They trail by three goals to one. Here's six-one on aggregate, and Crawley. Passing the ball around with confidence inside their own half. Jeremy Kelly into the substitute rolls. Rolls back to Adai, the goalkeeper. Apart from the Dean tapping at the end of the first half, he's been relatively untroubled. Yeah, it's one great save, ball. wasn't there, from uh, Tomlinson. Yeah. Three bodies. That was that was terrific reflexes, but nothing from close range. If basically, I'd like to know the touches in the box for MK. I just, it doesn't feel like they've had very many. 55 on the clock on A's from the home support and the away supporters away to our left I was travelling Crawley found who've made the relatively short trip from West Sussex it's MK Dons on the attack and they want an offside flag and they get it eventually Crawley Town Gilby frustrated over on the far side but he was off yeah the, the lines on this side has been conservative in his use of the flag <laughs> I think there have been times where, where players have been offside and he, he's aired on the side of caution but on that occasion he had to even though he, he put the flag up late but yeah Williams is coming on we've got another change here as well Tezgel coming on yeah both came on in the first leg MJ Williams who's had a lot of injuries over the course of his career that have stunted his progress and Emre Tezgel the 18 year old on loan from Stoke scored in uh, each of his last two games at the end of the league season Tezgel you could take anyone off couldn't you in a white shirt really yeah absolutely yeah in, in a way for some it might be the, a relief Jack Payne comes off I think MJ Williams is more suited to sort of having to sit there and, and prompt from deep than Jack Payne for me always more of an attacking midfielder Stephen Wern who's disappointed over the course of the uh, two legs is making way as well. Yeah, he, he didn't do a great deal, did he, Wern? And, and, and that was a surprise because he's another that's had a, a decent season, you have to say. Um, you know, four goals, six assists. He's not played every week, but you know, he's a decent player. He's in the team at the moment. I think I miss Dan Kemp, player that's here. Um, he, he was on loan at Swindon where he was brilliant. Here's Ellis Harrison kind of bulldoze his way in space on the edge of the area Jeremy Kelly stops him in his tracks then Liam Kelly knocks it away from Williams he's been brilliant over the two games <laughs> Liam Kelly absolutely he's not big is he he's tiny um, so experienced they played yeah. at Reading in the championship had a yeah. spell at Feyenoord as well yeah he's a good footballer a really good footballer good game intelligence and a proper work workhorse in the middle of the park but with quality 57 minutes played and you do feel that we are just playing out time now MK Dons 5 behind on aggregate 3-1 well on the night 6-1 well over the two legs chance for Gilby to get across in though looking for Harrison and it's just <coughs> swept away by Gordon yeah the wing backs haven't done enough have they tonight they should have been playing like wingers give me the ball and they should have put, been putting a stream of balls into the box. Um, but really, they've been on the edge of the game. It's, it's been... And then the match has really been won in midfield. Um, down that central spine with Kelly and Williams. And Orsi playing, you know, playing off the front. You know, Lolos as well was outstanding. That, that bunch of players in the middle of the pitch have been just outstanding for Crawley. 
Neatly brought down on the chest by Lofthouse in the right wing position for MK Dons. Williams back into the centre circle now. Well, he picked up possession from Tezgel. What's impressed me about Crawl is the work rate out of possession. They've stuck to their shape well, made it difficult for MK Dons to play around them. Here's Tezgel forward to Lofthouse. Lofthouse 10 yards or so outside the box comes infield. Immediately met by Maguire, so back out to the right and O'Hora. Tezgel in the yellow footwear can't hold it up. And then Williams is brought forward. He's cleared away by Maguire. Being asked to shoot is Dan Harvey, but plays it into Gilby on the edge of the box instead. They've got plenty of white shirts forward here and the cross fizzed in by Tomlinson, blocked by Kellen Gordon and out for MK Don's first corner of the second half. Yeah, but more crosses really from Tomlinson on the on the left wing in the last five minutes than we saw in the previous 55. So yeah, they, they, they're getting going. Corner routine created a shooting opportunity and it's one that has gone well wide of the upright in the end yeah it was um it was a decent in swinger see who was on the end of that in the end but it the, the flag went up for offside fairly early so a reminder as things stand crawley town will be taking on crew in the league league two playoff final live and only on national radio on talk sport to Ian Dan from Perry Groves former Arsenal winger your commentary team and that of course ahead of live final day Premier League action across the talk sport network in the previous day the next Saturday we'll have the League One playoff final Clarkey will be there at Wembley and that one is on talk sport as Bolton take on Oxford United yeah, tasty game that really good game it should be a huge crowd two very good teams I'd make Bolton the favourites but I'll tell you what Oxford tough nut to crack if they can hold out Peterborough they can certainly tame, tame Bolton Wanderers too so it's going to be uh, a yeah, very competitive final and they found form at the right time at the end of the season you can't say that about Crawley actually they only won one of their last five league matches but they've managed to reset and been absolutely terrific over the course of these two games against an MK Don side who were well ahead of everybody else in the playoffs in terms of points in fourth place but it looks like another season in the bottom tier for them and their playoff hoodoo will continue six times they've made the semi-finals never have qualified for Wembley Crawley will be there for the first time in their history unless unless <laughs> MK Dons can find five goals in the final half an hour that was a poor challenge from Jay Williams right in the centre of uh, his half and he's going to pick up a yellow card the opening goal scorer tonight for Crawley Dean the player who went down strikes me as the type of guy who can start a fight in an oh yeah match. he <laughs> loves it he, he, is a, he looks a tear away doesn't he but he's fully committed in every run he makes Here's Tomlinson, good ball from him, punched away by the goalkeeper, Gilby with a follow-up shot, straight into the arms of Adai, does well actually to smother the ball, with Emre Tezgel waiting to pounce, but Tomlinson still believes, he's put, he's put in some dangerous balls down that left-hand side the last few minutes. He's a very good player, and I was, I was surprised that they didn't get more of the ball to him in that first half. But yeah, he's, he's, he's been really, really strong last five, ten minutes down the left. Good ammunition. All of a sudden, they're, they're, they're posing more of a threat in K-Dons. But I have to say, Adai has made good decisions with his saves this evening. Certainly been the entertainers, MK Dons, in recent weeks. 22 goals scored, 27 conceded in their last eight matches alone. So, I mean, that's the goals against... It's a massive red flag, isn't it? And, and that's probably the reason why why they're heading out. They just haven't been good enough defensively, haven't been good enough without the ball across the legs to to see off Crawley. I, maybe the reason they sat off in that first leg is that they don't feel they're good enough as a, as a pressing side to to contain a team like Crawley who are good enough to play through you. And and, and I haven't seen Crawley, you know, in the flesh tonight. Very good, aren't they? Playing through the lines. Oh, and they're trying to press high again here and force a mistake. It was Jack Rolls dispossessing 
Jack Tucker, who's had a really difficult night, and Tucker sliding back, gives away the foul. I think he got a yellow card for his trouble. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's again it's a tough evening for him. Tough for Tucker. Yeah, it's um, again, it's it's Crawley Town pressing. Uh, you, you wouldn't know. They're six one up on aggregate. They they are tigerish. They want more, and they don't want to settle. They don't want to give MK Dons the initiative here. They want to keep going, keep going for the jugular. And I mean, I'm so impressed with their work rate and their and their attitude. Liam Kelly stands over the ball midway inside the Milton Keynes half. I think they'll have to go down to the standout performer over the two games. Deep free kick towards the far post. Only cleared to the edge of the MK penalty area. It's put back in towards Williams. He couldn't quite get his head on it. It's a dangerous ball fizzed in by Jeremy Kelly and any kind of clear contact. And Williams might just have claimed his third goal over the two games. Yeah, it was a peach of a ball, wasn't it? Absolutely superb. Lovely in swing of it. It's just always bending away from the, the Crawley attackers that are looking to get on the end of it. I think we're going to see uh, another Crawley change in a moment. Here, meanwhile, is MJ Williams dropping deep into the back line and then playing it forward for Harvey to get up and join the attack. Out to Tomlinson on that far side again. They've got four. White shirts in the centre, Harvey has stayed forward, but it's volleyed away by Kellen Gordon, the Crawley substitute up towards Orsi, nodded away by Tucker, at the expense of a throw-in on halfway. It's just giving his squad here a, a taste of the action, I think, Scott Lindsay, in the final yeah. 25 minutes of the game, 3-1 up Crawley here tonight, 6-1 on aggregate, and a reminder, we have the Championship Playoff semi-finals tomorrow. 12 o'clock kickoff at Carrow Road, Norwich against Leeds. That's followed at 2.15, West Brom, Southampton. And then the Sunday session live from Old Trafford. Can Manchester United ruin Arsenal's title chances? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I have said that with you in mind. Uh, Saruna's come on for Crawley. And making his way off all the way over on the far side of the field. Is that Jay Williams who's gone off? Score with the opening goal? Yep. Well, he's on a yellow. You don't want to pick up a second yellow, do you? Mentioned Leeds in action tomorrow. Sarula, who's just come on, was one of the Crawley goal scorers when they beat Leeds, then in the Premier League in the FA Cup a couple of seasons ago at the Broadfield Stadium. They also had a fifth round tie at Old Trafford recently. And it's Harrison with the ball into the area. And it's a penalty. Handball given against Liam Kelly. The referee whistled immediately. I don't think the assistant on this near side flag for it. But maybe a lifeline for the MK Dons. <laughs> it's a really soft penalty. It comes from absolutely nowhere. Harrison down the down the left. Uh, down the right rather. Just clips a hopeful ball in. And it may well have hit the arm. It's certainly not deliberate. But the referee didn't need a second invitation to give it. And look. A little bit of pride at stake here, and Max Dean has said, let me have it. Max Dean looking for his second goal on the evening, his 17th for the season. The former Leeds youngster up against Corey Adai, who's really enhanced his reputation over the two games. We'll still have a quarter of the match to play, and the Crawley lead would be down to four again. Max Dean, right footed, saved by Adai to his right, that's a brilliant stop from the Crawley goalkeeper. And even that route back into the game is quickly closed for Milton Keynes Dons. It sums it up, doesn't it, for MK Dons, it's not your season, it's not your night, it's not your playoff semi-final. What a good keeper Corey Adai is, what a good keeper he is, he has had an outstanding season. Brilliant save from the Crawley goalkeeper. And then a shot hammered high over the crossbar from Tezgirl. They are shooting on sight now, Milton Keynes Dons. But you feel their hope is a forlorn one. That last lifeline as Max Dean kicks the ball away. There were two balls on the pitch, so I think he was in fairness just trying to get the goalkeeper to get on with it 
and missed a glaring chance right at the start of the first leg Max Dean got his goal in first half stop his time to reduce the deficit but he had the chance to get it back to 3-2 back to 6-2 on aggregate and he has been denied by what you have to say it was a brilliant save from Adai 22 minutes to go and more and more of the home supporters are heading back to their cars big swathe of empty seats over on the far side of the ground that was full before kick off that lower tier they know their race is run on yet another ill-fated playoff campaign for the Buckinghamshire side and here come Crawley looking to add more insult to injury the cross steered in towards Rolls but straight into the arms of Philip Marshall we sense there could be more goals in this for Crawley Rolls out to the left hand side to Sarula Sarula into the penalty area his cross is charged down by Lofthouse and behind for what I think is Crawley's first corner amazingly yeah. Clark. It's, look, it's sarcastic cheers there for the goalkeeper it's it's an awful situation isn't it Philip Mar it's not Philip Marshall's fault that he was picked tonight but and the fans have told the manager there what they think about that decision <laughs> he's in the reason that they're heading you know out and that they're going to stay in league two next season but there's a real real resentment I think among the supporters what's a great from the goalkeeper Kelly's corner punched away yeah. uncomfortably he, yeah he's not had a good night Philip Marshall but it's not just him I think it was a bizarre move it, yeah um, you know, having, having been at the first leg I, I didn't come away from it thinking well the goalkeeper's a problem <laughs> and I, well yeah you just pile on the pressure on someone right at the start of his career on loan from Aston Villa hasn't played much first team football to chuck him in to a semi-final that you have to win by three goals I think he's asking for trouble yeah yeah it's it's, it's going to be a regret and I'm looking at Mike Williamson down there beneath us very isolated figure he's sat on his own on the end of the dugout none of the subs are anywhere near him he's he's just deep in his thoughts um, I feel a bit sorry for him but yeah the decisions he's made tonight in regards to team selection have, have absolutely backfired Crawley Town fans in brilliant voice away to our left to be fair the MK Don supporters behind Adai's goal is still trying to whip up an atmosphere but the old ladies will tell you that Crawley have possession on the halfway line yeah. I'd say about a quarter of the home fans have left if you look across the, the way there was nowhere near full to start with was it no it was a really sparse crowd for, for a playoff uh, semi-final it was a disappointing crowd to see some of the MK Doms fans doing the Poznan at the, at the top there um, facing the scoreboard a little bit demob happy it was a brilliant picture actually Noel Gallagher he always yeah. turns up when uh, yeah. City are trying to win trophies <laughs> he was, he was <laughs> in the Emily Way fans at Craven Cottage they were all doing the Poznan and he was just yeah. his isolated his figure he refused facing to the pitch <laughs> yeah, yeah he's his own image. man he's his own man is no certainly not a, uh, not a sheep is he no oh what a band my favourite from back in the day Liam Kelly's been caught now uh, wins a free kick right corner of the penalty area yeah, they've just got to manage the game now Corley make sure they don't get any injuries and yeah just do the right thing but they've been doing the right thing right across these two legs yeah apart obviously they conceded one goal from a free kick that aside how many mistakes have they made even the penalty for me wasn't a mistake it's the ball blasted at somebody's arm and it wasn't a bad miss it was a good save from the kick a very good save yeah Corey had I it's massive as well isn't he good with his feet excellent shot stopper stats yeah. are off the scale he sense okay. he might be playing his trade much higher before too long yeah of course Crawley hope themselves to be back in league one next season they'll play crew in the final barring something quite extraordinary in these last 18 minutes live on TalkSport 2 next Sunday one o'clock kickoff ahead of the final day of the Premier League season the league title very much still up for grabs a lot of relegation places decided earlier today Burnley and Luton all but mathematically down short free kick Darcy with the ball in scored a deflected goal at the end of the first leg that really actually was quite decisive in taking this tie away from MK Dons Darcy and he's in possession now down by the right corner flag 
<laughs> under the cover of darkness here in Milton Keynes. Yeah, the O'Leys are out now. Very, very confident. Just keeping the ball in a nice little triangle over in that far quadrant. And the ball is back with Philip Marshall, the MK goalkeeper. One ball upfield looking for Ellis Harrison. He's got a bit of space to flick that on towards Dean and stepping in there was McQueen down the right hand side. He skips over the challenge from Gilby. They've got a chance to play their way through again here. Super. Into Kelly over the halfway line. He's got options right and left. Also in the centre. Kelly towards the edge of the area. Into Rolls. Rolls with a right footed shot. And the goalkeeper spilt it. And it hits the post. More well, that would have been another judgment. calamity from the goalkeeper. Yeah, more by luck than judgment, that save. Goodness me. That was not convincing. It's a stinger from Rolls, but it's kind of straight out of the keeper. His wrists have been back, and he just deflects it unconvincingly onto the post. Yeah, he, he, he looks a bag of nerves, Philip Marshall. It'll be interesting how Mike Williamson explains that decision after the game. Here's... Rolls again, scoops the ball out to Sarula, the subs fancy getting themselves on the goal scoring action sense. Sarula to Williams on the edge of the area for Crawley Town. MK Dons look they're broken. absolutely lost out there. Yeah, they're broken. It's 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 kind of like watching like Man United at Palace the other night. They're just they're just they're offering nothing. They're 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 not pressing. They're not keeping their positions. Basically, it's keep ball from, from Cordy, but they're slicing through down the middle with incredible ease. I, I think they're a great footballing team, Corley. You know, based on this form, you know, they'll love Wembley. Liam Kelly back into his own half. <laughs> I think he's making sure that every outfield player gets a touch of the ball here. Yeah. But look, look, at, look at the forward line. There's five up front here for Corley. Well, it must be a nice position to be in when you know you're 6-1 up on aggregate, 3-1 on the night. Yeah. It's 3-2-5. That's where they're playing here. And, and the yeah, MK Dons completely flummoxed. There aren't too many teams who've been able to play with this kind of freedom in the second leg away from home in the playoff semi-final. That's credit to the hard work that Crawley did on Tuesday night and to a large extent in the opening 49 minutes of this game to go 3-1 up and really take the tie away from Milton Keynes. They have it back in their own half now with Conroy, the captain. He'll be leading the team out of Wembley a week tomorrow. The ball back to Adai, midway inside the penalty area. As the away fans are going through their Wembley songbook once more here on Talk Sports 2. Sarula down the line to Kelly. Rolls has made a purposeful run ahead of him. Also looking for a hat trick if he can get the pass. Sliding in was Harvey to stop what looked a really good attack again from Crawley Town. Yeah, they're just finding all the little pockets of space. And they're not little pockets, are they, Alex? They're, they're wide open spaces right now because their hearts are broken, MK. They're just looking towards the final whistle now. They're crushed. And, and Crawley can do what they like, but Liam Kelly buzzing around. He always pulls to the left as well, doesn't he? I like how he does that. He sort of... Pulls those central midfielders wide. Do they go with him or do they pass him on? They haven't really got to grips with it at all. MK over the two legs. Scott Lindsay responding to the urges of the Crawley fans up in that second tier away to our left to give them a wave. What a proud moment for him. And I guess you alluded to it, Adrian Clark in the first half when he leads them out at the National Stadium, that will vindicate his decision to take what looked like a gamble leaving Swindon for Crawley, at that time were in all kinds of problems off the pitch. Yeah, look, Swindon a big, you know, much bigger club than Crawley, but he obviously saw in the owners, you know, s somebody to work with or some people to work with that he, he could do it, and he's obviously been given licence to go out there and build his own team in his mould, and look, if, the, if the brief was to bring winning football, but that's easy on the eye that's heavy possession attack mighty football well he's absolutely nailed it um, they, they, they're such a well coached side and I think Swindon's loss is, is absolutely Crawley's game 13 minutes of this game to play MK Dons 1 Crawley 3 6-1 the visitors lead on aggregate here on TalkSport 2 your home of the EFL 
both those finals next weekend live on the TalkSport network Saturday on TalkSport Bolton Oxford in the League One final and then next Sunday it will be Crawley against Crew here on TalkSport 2 MK Don Steele looking to salvage some pride jinking one there from Emre Tezgel into the penalty area cleared away by Maguire and out for a throw down by the right corner flag the second sticking slowly by I think as far as the home supporters are concerned many of them stood arms folded behind the goal crowd of 10,053 here tonight 1,630 have made their way from Sussex and that journey more than worthwhile for the travelling Crawley supporters cool, you bet it is <laughs> yeah, they're, they're loving it just looking at some of the match stats it's amazing given how magnificent Crawley have been they've had six shots it's a night five shots on target three have gone in yeah just super efficient but that doesn't tell anywhere near the story because I think some of their play between both boxes has been exceptional I do um, Liam Kelly's a contender for man of the match again isn't he, he is yeah I, th I think that's who I'd give it to I really I would the, um, it feels like there's two Liam Kellys out there and I know there is there are two Kellys <laughs> in the Crawley side there's Jeremy Kelly as well who's, who's also played well but yeah he's, he is everywhere the little man inside the heart of that engine room and they're still hunting high up the pitch trying to force the errors Marshall with the ball upfield for Milton Keynes Maguire immediately puts it back into the home half of the field and down the left hand side is Rolls Orsi waits in the centre Rolls cutting in field and he's right foot and loses the ball then wins it again Kelly wants it played to the edge of the air it's into Orsi again he's got room to turn here Orsi can he get a shot away Rolls does into the bottom corner and that sets the seal on a historic victory for Crawley Town Jack Rolls off the bench makes it 4-1 on the night 7-1 on aggregate they are in seventh heaven the traveling fans well Corley Town take a bow this is a demolition job they have wiped the floor with Milton Keynes Dons across these two games and tonight they may have only had seven shots but four have found the back of the net and this is this is as good as it gets for a club like Corley well it's not quite as good as it gets that might come next Sunday but this is this is up there for them Mike Williamson stunned Scott Lindsay ecstatic this is beyond his and every Crawley Town player's wildest dreams Jack Rolls the latest to get his name on the score sheet not scored since New Year's Day he has now <laughs> and it's the goal that absolutely confirms their place at Wembley although in truth that was ratified a long long time ago yeah it was he's really determined to score as well he, he ran in down the left hand side and he could easily have slipped in a teammate into the box he was a little bit greedy he held onto the ball and you, fo you thought he was lost the ball and it sort of fell his way he kept it alive so did Danilo Orsi and then he gets lucky the bounce of the ball off Orsi falls Rolls way and he just drills it low and hard into the near post no chance that time for Philip Marshall but yeah look I've got to say this doesn't it, it's not a flattering scoreline for me this is this is kind of how it should be that, that there's been a big gap between these two teams this evening and of course in the previous game Super Crawley Town is the cry from those travelling hordes a very special night for the Red Devils a very disappointing one for Milton Keynes Dons ploughed so much money into this football club and ultimately he's going to come to nothing again in the playoffs another agonising semi-final defeat a reckless challenge from Williams as Saruna is breaking clear a frustrated tackle from the substitute another yellow card that's naughty that is naughty Sarula, you know he's looking at a game at Wembley next Sunday he's trying to take him out 
Just a few minutes left to play here with the game done and dusted. You know, that one might have been for the MK Dons fans just to show I care. I'm, I'm with you, you know, I'll give everything, but don't go about your work like that. You know, win the tackle, make it clean. That, he's never going to win that ball. There aren't many MK Dons fans left in the stadium. Look at this that far true. side. This is true, yeah. You can literally see MK Don spelt out in letters in the seats because there's nobody in them. Yeah, so there's 10,000, so there's, what, 8,500 home supporters at the start. Yeah, you're probably saying there's three left, three and a half. At least we'll get out of the car park. This is true, yeah. Well, it's a bonus. <laughs> but look, yeah, it's, it's humbling. What a horrible way to end this season. You know, it's the last home game. You... Yeah, you, you go off on your summer holidays with the tail between your legs. And look, some of these players might now be released. This might be their last last game in the colours. And yeah, but, and, and it's unlucky because they were so close to automatic promotion. They were right in the mix until the last couple of weeks. But yeah, ultimately, they haven't been good enough. Williams releasing Gordon down the right-hand side. Goalkeeper Marshall had a good starting position. Clears into that empty lower tier over on the far touchline. We played 84 minutes. It's MK Dons 1, Crawley 4 here on TalkSport 2, 7-1 on aggregate to the visitors. And I think this is one of those nights, if you're an MK Dons player, you don't want the uh, fourth official to oh, put no. up too many added minutes at the end of the game. Yeah, you want a mercy um, time put on the board. You want to be one or two. And we might see that. Let's, you know, We haven't got long to wait, but I think ever since that penalty miss... Or the save, rather, from Corey Adai. They've given nothing. They've, they've given up the ghost, MK Dons. Their body language has changed. And, and yeah, they, they just cannot wait for the final whistle. And they've been absolutely schooled by Crawley over the two guards. Darcy on the halfway line for the visitors. Run back by Dean. And he hurls himself to the ground. And he wants to get himself in a fight with Jack Rolls. <laughs> It's a free kick, it's a nothing incident. Yeah, he, he, he reared up, didn't he? And then I think he realised, actually, what's the point? Um, and, and I think Jack Rolls was smiling, so they laughed it off in the end. But yeah, Max is definitely um, the sort, I would imagine, the gear's in a few tear-ups in training. Demon the ball out to the right-hand side for MK Dance. It's Crawley voices filling the late-night air on this very warm Saturday evening in Milton Keats in a blisteringly hot day and it's been a scorching performance from Crawley Town as Dean with a cross can't find Harrison it's just watched out of play over on that far side by Kellen Gordon we're in for the last four minutes plus whatever is added on at the end of the 90s yeah he's, he's got a big career ahead of him though Max he's only 20 I think so he's a player of potential he's got a lot of heart and courage clearly a big personality and he's scored a lot of goals so I think he might be the sort of player that, that MK can, can make some money out of moving forwards. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the makeup of the uh, MK Don squad next season. First summer transfer window for Mike Williamson. I think he's earned the right. Dean with the ball into the area, clear behind for a corner. Dean waiting actually at the far post to get on the end of that as the cross came in from Tomlinson. Is it way to a right, they, they gave out some red red flags, some white flags, didn't they? Hit a kick off. <laughs> I think a few of the fans have been waving the white ones. For most of this so second half. the players, by <laughs> the way. <laughs> Corner kick for MK Dons. They're only playing for pride now. It's towards the far post. Headed away by Mukinha. And then volley back in by Dean. And the goalkeeper had I contend to watch it behind. For a goal kick. 4 1 to Crawley. 7 1. Over the two games, and we played 87 minutes. You're listening to Talk Sport 2, your home of the EFL. Yeah, just wondering what crew, uh, you know, Lee Bell, their manager, make, make of this. Obviously, they, they didn't expect probably to reach the final. I thought Doncaster were nailed on, you know, given, you know, how spectacularly they'd ended the campaign. So, you know, they got those two early goals, and then they sort of <laughs> declared crew and, and, and accepted penalties, and they got through on it. But I tell you what, crew will have to play better than they did it across their two-legger with Donny uh, against this Crawley team. I would I would definitely make these favourites. It's not the final you'd have expected no, at the start no. of the playoffs. And, and both have been really inconsistent. We talked about it earlier. Crawley have lost 18 games. And Crew went into the playoffs in in horrific form, didn't they? They were really 
they'd, they'd hit the wall. So it's kind of unbelievable that they find themselves both at Wembley, but you know, it's, it's all to play for. Lots at stake. Oh, indeed, Ashton was uh, amongst the away fans at Donny last night. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Started his career, of course, at Cresty Road. Has he got a crew shirt? Has he got the replica shirt? Donny's not near where he lives particularly either. That's a big old trick for him. That's, that's a good show of support, that, from Dino. I'm sure there were a couple of beers involved as well. <laughs> Maybe a round of golf on <laughs> Yeah, I reckon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, Crawley are just uh, knocking the ball around amongst themselves. That's a lovely pirouette away from Gilby by Jeremy Kelly. All the party tricks coming out here. He's been good tonight, Jeremy Kelly. Started on the left and sort of moved more central. Second half since Williams went off and was really at home in there. I mean, in midfield, they have just tormented. The white shirts of MK Dons all, all game long, haven't they? Liam Kelly plays it back to Conroy in the heart of that Crawley defence. Again, the Olays ringing out in that away end. Liam Kelly now dropping deep into his own half Crawley leading by four goals to one seven one on aggregate just about as comfortable a playoff semi-final victory as you will see yeah having that to extend themselves been able to rest a few players second half no extra time of course crew went to the full 120 minutes didn't they so look, you have to say kind of the preparation for, for the final has been better for Crawley but look it's a one-off it's a one-off game it's who handles that occasion best isn't it underneath the arch here's Dean trying to make space for a shot on the edge of the area had his pocket picked by Jeremy Kelly and Crawley can break away now Darcy's made it run up in support of Orsi but they're not in any great hurry McKenna to get it forward he goes back into his own half instead of we've got 30 seconds of normal time to play all eyes on the fourth official I think both sets of players hoping <laughs> only a minute or two will be added for very different reasons of course here's Darcy don't think we're going to be seeing any lap of honour tonight from MK Dons well look I actually think they probably should still you know there won't be much, many people here for it but you know at the end of the season I think they will want to go and thank their supporters and I think you know a section of their support will want to go and thank them for you know, for what's been a largely excellent season it's just gone horribly wrong in the in the playoff semi-final so they deserve a round of applause four minutes of additional time here on talk sport two Probably well, we have the ball inside their own penalty area Adai plays it out to the left and Lawrence Maguire And Maguire gets it back from Conroy, his captain. And almost plays Adai into trouble. Ding kicks the post in frustration as he went to close the keeper down. And Adai calmly knocks it away from him. I reckon Adai is one of the best players in the keep ball sessions, don't you? I mean, he looks, he looks a good passer to me. He looks a real character as well. Here's Liam Kelly, is there? One final cherry on the cake for Crawley. Kelly into the penalty area. Out to Saruna. Back to Kelly. Can he get a shot away? No. Come for Darcy, and he ballooned his effort high over the bar. That would have been the grand finale, as far as Crawley are concerned, but not to be on this occasion. No, he's nowhere near finding the target. There's shot eight. It's only the second shot they've failed to hit the target with tonight. They've been so efficient. Crawley Town. Yeah, MK Dons. You know the, the stats say that they've had 11 shots, five on target, but it's been much more dominant than that. Yeah, they've never really been in this game. Ball flicked on towards Orsi, trying to put Tucker under pressure, not a great clearance away by Tucker. Continuing his poor night, Saruna into the area, rolls it out to Darcy, Darcy for Orsi! Bundles it in from point blank range! It's a hat trick for Danilo Orsi! And the grandstand finish on this historic night for Crawley Town! It is 5-1! 8-1 on aggregate and Daniela Orsi has the match ball it's a fantastic five for Crawley Town and Daniela Orsi I mean he's chested it in from I would say one yard out it's not a glamorous strike but a hat trick 
in a playoff semi-final on the road to seal a trip to Wembley. Does it get much better than that? I don't think so. And he will be a key man, won't he, at Wembley against Crow Alexandra next weekend. This has been rampant from Crawley. Just magnificent. I'm not sure anybody inside this stadium or those watching and listening can quite believe what's unfolded here. One of the all-time great playoff performances. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, over two legs. Yeah, I mean, 8-1 is just... It, it's just amazing. And then uh, just seeing some of the MK fans there. There was, was a bit of trouble at the top of the stand there. But, yeah, they're, they're, they're heading away now with their tails between their legs, the MK fans. It's, it's been a nightmare evening hasn't it? Pre pretty much from minute three when they gifted the goal to the visitors. From that moment on they've been broken. Ellis Harrison plays it into the penalty area. Oh, and it's a brilliant save from Adai. He made himself big and he turns the shot from Tezgel onto the crossbar. Tezgel could have had a couple. What a save that is. It's kind of with his forearm. It's a reflex save at his near post. This keeper is decent, and I think that the big stage next Sunday might just suit him. The four added minutes are almost up. MK Dons nearly out of their misery. As the referee shows a yellow card, there's another flare up over on the far side. And the home players in danger of losing their heads. There's a late challenge on McQueena. Is it, uh, is it Gilby? Gilby? I think, I think it's Gilby. Looking, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a desperate challenge. It's rugby tackle, isn't it? Just pulls him back by the shirt. No, it's Dean. It's Dean. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, he's tracking back. You know, in fairness to him, 95th minute, there he is tracking back. But, yeah, it's a horrible tackle. We're going to score in a minute. Sing the Crawley fans and it. Feels like they could, you know, even though time is almost up as the full-time whistle blows.